Welcome to Chapter 7, Supervisory Planning. Planning involves establishing objectives based on the current situation and forecasts of the future and determining the actions needed to achieve the objectives. Planning must be the first managerial function because without a plan, none of the other functions can be meaningfully implemented. Strategic planning begins with the creation of a mission statement, which reflects the organization's basic philosophy, purpose, and reason for being. Often, the mission statement is the yardstick by which the company's performance and results are measured. Visioning takes strategic planning beyond the mission statement. It involves developing an image of what the firm will become. This image or vision becomes the foundation. Strategic planning involves the process of making decisions that will enable a firm to make that vision a reality, to achieve those long-term goals. Supervisors usually engage in detailed, short-range planning for their department. Planning draws on past and present performance in order to develop goals for future performance. Supervisors should use specialists when necessary and communicate with employees concerning suggestions and plans for the department. The supervisor should be informed of organizational plans so that departmental plans coordinate with the firm's long-range objectives. Management by objectives is a process in which supervisor and subordinates jointly determine what is to be done. Basically, the supervisor and the employee must together decide on specific, measurable objectives that fit within the organization's overall goals. The supervisor provides the necessary resources and the employee develops specific activities to meet those objectives. The supervisor and the employee then use the agreed-upon objectives as guidelines for evaluating work performance, both for reviewing progress and for comparing results when the time period is ended. There are four major types of standing or repeat-use plans, policies, procedures, methods, and roles. Policies serve as guides for decisions, while procedures are guides to action. Methods are more detailed than procedures, explaining exactly how a single operation is to be performed. Finally, rules are very specific standing plans that must be followed without exception. All of these standing plans are helpful in keeping supervisory action consistent and employee output predictable. The three principal types of single-use plans are budgets, projects, and programs. Budgets are financial plans that specify income and expenses for a fixed period of time. Programs are comprehensive single-use plans designed to accomplish the organization's objectives, while projects are single-use plans for accomplishing a specific non-recurring activity. Planning makes the best use of human and physical resources. Supervisors must plan for the efficient use of space and of major physical resources such as tools, machinery, and computers. Additionally, supervisors must ensure the security of materials, merchandise, and data in order to protect the company's substantial investment in them. Supervisory planning also involves the full use of human resources. This begins with ensuring a safe work environment for all employees. It also includes establishing expectations for overtime and absences, developing alternative work schedules, and using part-time and temporary employees efficiently. Supervisors must always be on the lookout for ways to improve the department's use of time, which can be accomplished through improved work procedures and methods. Planning for effective use of inventory may include just-in-time inventory techniques. Gantt charts and PERT networks help supervisors in efficiently planning and scheduling projects. Planning is crucial to establishing, improving, and maintaining the quality of a firm's offerings. Planning may be started by comparisons with other firms as it's done in benchmarking or through preventing defects and continuously improving quality as with total quality management or through systematic storage, retrieval, dissemination, and sharing of information as with knowledge management. If a firm hasn't planned how and when to improve product quality, inefficiency and decreases in quality may result. Every company risks crisis. Supervisors must be prepared for the unexpected. Crisis management planning involves identifying the unthinkables, developing a plan for dealing with them, developing contingency plans, forming crisis teams, and simulating crisis drills. Furthermore, supervisors should foster an organizational atmosphere of learning where response time is immediate and apologies are given when warranted. Supervisors must use their information-getting and information-giving skills to help employees prepare for and address crisis.
Planning means establishing objectives based on the current situation and forecast of the future and determining the actions needed to achieve the objectives. Planning is the first managerial function and is probably the most crucial, one that is done every day. Strategic planning is the process of establishing goals and making decisions that enable an organization to achieve its long and short-term objectives. Planning periods can be long-term, anything greater than a year, or short-term, usually a year or less. Strategic plans are long-term plans developed by top management. Top management is usually responsible for developing the strategic plan and supervisors plan activities for their departments that will achieve overall organizational goals. Managers should be more involved in strategy development as their participation will lead to greater commitment to the resulting goals. A mission statement is a statement of the organization's basic philosophy, purpose, and reason for being. Visioning is a management's view of what the company should become that reflects the firm's core values, priorities, and goals. All managers plan, but different managers plan at different levels. Upper management planning is usually broader and far more reaching than planning done by supervisors, where planning tends to be more detail-oriented. Evaluations of past performance should be incorporated into managerial planning. Managers should not plan in a vacuum, but should utilize the knowledge of specialists and employees for suggestions when appropriate. Upper management must develop a general statement of broad goals and objectives for the firm. The terms goals and objectives are used interchangeably. Whenever possible, objectives should be stated in specific, measurable terms with a defined period of time. It's important to identify the overall purposes and results toward which all plans and activities are directed. Goals and objectives must reflect upper-level managers' vision. Goals are usually stated in what-by-when statements and should be measurable and verifiable. Measurement by objectives is a system for participative management. It's a process in which the supervisor and employee jointly set the employee's objectives and the employee receives rewards upon achieving those objectives. MBO requires thorough planning, organization, controls, communication, and commitment. Management by objective can influence motivation and encourage employee commitment. It also provides objective criteria for performance evaluation and rewards. Management by objective gives a step-by-step -step model in which joint determination of specific and verifiable objectives are given. Top management identifies major goals of the organization for the coming period. Managers, supervisors, and employees review their job descriptions to clarify responsibilities and authority. Employees develop their own specific objectives in relation to the broader organizational and departmental objectives. Supervisor and employee negotiate a final list of objectives acceptable to both. In the resource input stage, the supervisor must give the employee the resources needed to achieve those agreed upon objectives. Employees develop activities and processes to achieve those objectives. To get results, both the supervisor and employee should compare end of period results against objectives and start the cycle all over again. Management by objective ties together many plans, establishing priorities and coordinating activities. In addition, MBO encourages commitment of everyone in the organization by allowing each person to participate in determining his or her own performance objectives.